so my writing style is very conversational. And that was a big block I kind of had to get over because I thought I'm not good at writing. I don't know how to write. And then I was like, I'm just going to write like I was explaining to somebody or telling somebody something. I started with blogging. And that's a very conversational style of writing. Welcome to the My Future Business Show, where we get you in front of your best audience and keep you there. Not only are we interviewing the biggest names in business to help you become even more successful, we're inviting you to book your spot on the show to help you grow your business. So at the end of the call, make sure you fill in the interview application form at myfuturebusiness.com forward slash interviews. Hello, 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 and welcome back to the show. My name is Rick. It's wonderful to have you with us, and it's always wonderful to be your host. It's even more special when we have incredible guests who are doing amazing things inside of their businesses, and today that is no difference because I'm on the line with the wonderful Gail Wood. Welcome to the show, Gail. Thank you so much. I'm excited to be here. Oh, I'm very excited because I was going through your bio and uh, your numerous businesses, very successful businesses. And um, there's a lot of people on the show, Gail, who love to learn about how to write books. They've never done it. And, mm-hmm. you know, I think we can certainly share some uh, very interesting insights into that process, but also what it takes to uh, be an entrepreneur and a business owner. And, uh, you know, yeah. how uh, really our focus today is going to be on how writing books can help you actually create a six figure online business. But before we do any of that, Gail, is customary for us to learn about you, learn about, I guess, a bit of your family. Right now, I know that uh, your husband and son are down underneath you pumping weights and doing whatever it is that they do. So let's let's start by finding out where home is for you. Yeah, so I'm in Boone, North Carolina, which is in the mountains of um, of North Carolina, USA. Yes. yes. Um, and so since since March of 2020, I've been homeschooling my son. When school started back up, we decided not to go back. Oh, so, okay. yeah. Um, so I run my businesses and homeschool from from my house here. And <laughs> crazy. Um, we have a fun and busy life. <laughs> so um, do you get much time away given that now that you've got homeschooling and running businesses? And if you do, what do you do with yourself? Yeah, so part of the reason we decided to homeschool was so that we could get more traveling in. Mm-hmm. Um, in December, we, we took a trip to Mexico with friends for surfing. Beautiful. Um, we love to go to the beach and most in rock climbing trips my husband and son and daughter are all rock climbers so we go to a lot of rock climbing areas yeah it's wonderful to stay fit and healthy i think that's a really mm-hmm. important thing so what is your part of all of that do you do rock climbing well i did before i had my son and i kind of got out of it because oh. once i had him to chase after and i went back <laughs> to work i got mm-hmm. out of shape for it so yeah. now i um walk a lot i do yoga i try i I do what I can to stay in shape because you've got to have energy to live your life. <laughs> so tell us what uh, drew you to the location that you're living in now. Has that always been home for you? or? Yeah, well, I grew up here. Mm. My There's a university here in the town, and my mom worked there as a professor. So we all moved here, and um, here you are. I have, I've left a few times, but I always come back. So it's, it's funny that how that happens, isn't it? You know? Uh, yes. Yeah, your home is where the heart is, and I suspect that that is where it is. Now, when you were growing up, tell us a little bit about that. Did you have a, 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 a you know an uplifting childhood? What was your childhood like? Oh, yeah, I had, I had a very good childhood. My mom was a single mom, mm-hmm. and she was a really good example of you know, working hard, and um, she earned her PhD and became a professor. And so, you know, I had her to influence me and I kind of took a different path because school is not my favorite. She's an (laughs) educator. Um, I love to learn. I read every day. I always have. We didn't have TV when I was growing up. So a blessing almost. What's that? A blessing almost. Yes, definitely. So I became an avid reader and learner, Mm -hmm. but I just didn't like structured school. And when I got to high school, I was like, I'm about tired of people (laughs) telling me what to do. So I left high school early Mm -hmm. and started taking college classes. And then from there, I went to massage school. And that's really where my career started. Yes. Um, Was in the massage and spa industry. I went on to get my um, skincare license and open up my first face spa um, in 2003. Yes, thank you for sharing. I, I'm wondering, um, when you when you do read, um, what's your pleasure reading? What do you read for fun? Uh, you know, I like really light readings. I've been reading a lot of 
Sophie Kinsella, she wrote this series called The Shopaholic. Mm -hmm. um, because I read so much, so many business books and self-help books that when I'm reading for, for pleasure, I like to keep it pretty light and, <laughs> and entertaining. Oh, I can understand <laughs> that because it can become fairly full on, can't it? Now, I wonder, uh, do you have different modalities? Do you enjoy audio books at all? Yeah, I love audio books because I walk a lot. So mm. if I'm walking outside or on my treadmill, I'm almost always listening to an audio book. Um, and those are usually business or, you know, personal development. So when you start your day, Gail, I think it's important because mm -hmm. we have a lot of uh, startup entrepreneurs and, and people around us in the, on the, sh in the, in the audience, should I say, who really take a lot out of sort of taking tidbits away from people's lives. Mm -hmm. So what does your day look like? Do you, do you rise early and what's your routine? Yeah, I normally get up about six mm -hmm. and we start our homeschool day at nine. So that gives me three hours um to prepare for my day work plan my day so um one of my biggest tips is my phone lives in the kitchen uh -huh. i don't have any devices connected to the internet in my bedroom um and so that way i wake up and i drink coffee i read mm -hmm. i you know do a little journaling and i and then i usually jump straight into like planning my day making my to-do list from there yeah no thank you i it's wonderful that you shared about the phone because i personally mm -hmm. suffer from you know bringing the uh, phone into the bedroom and getting that bright light um, at night time is it something you used to do that you've changed or has it always been that way yeah i definitely had to make a real conscious decision around that because it's almost impossible to turn your alarm clock on your phone off and not check your messages, mm. check your email, see a notification that then you're just reacting straight from there. Then yes, you're in reactive a, mode it's very and skillful. you're not in pro, proactive. It's definitely a skill. I, uh, I, I had to learn that myself, that's for sure. And certain. Now, I, I wonder, you've, you seem to have a very strong um, mindset about you. Um, how much effort does it take now? And we'll start to uh, change direction of the conversation in a moment to, to mm -hmm. be homeschooling and running a business at the same time. Has that uh, presented new challenges? Well, it, it definitely has, but um, I really like it because it gives me just different variety throughout the day, which is nice. I'm not yeah. trying to sit and just work on my computer all day. You know, I have two days a week where I have two extra boys that homeschool at my house. Mm -hmm. So we have a really good flow to the day and they're all great. They have their list, they do their work without complaining, but we go walk the dog, then we make lunch and it just makes a nice flow to the day. And I also think that when I do have work time, I tend to be more focused because I know it is more limited. Yeah, fantastic. Because you need to now chunk your time, don't you? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, and, that, and that's a real skill in itself. So thank, thank you for sharing. Now, I'm wondering, um, we're obviously going to be talking about your businesses. You have several of them. Could you share a little bit of detail about them with us? Yes. Well, my one business, I actually just closed on January oh. 3rd. So that was Massage and Spa Success, which I ran. Um, I started it in 2014. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I published my first ebook in 2014. Yep. Um, and it was just about the end of the year because I remember we were driving to Thanksgiving to my husband's family's house and I sold my first ebook in the car wow. on that trip. <laughs> <laughs> now, I bet you remember it because it's always the first one you remember, isn't it? Yeah, and I remember thinking, if one person will buy this ebook for nineteen ninety five, maybe a hundred will, maybe yeah. a thousand will, and just it really just inspired me to kind of go all in on on my digital content and online business because that's what I love about ebooks, online courses. When you make it once, you can sell it over and over and over. Yeah, the the uh, never ending story, isn't it? I I wonder yeah. it, what sort of platforms do you use to distribute. So I have used, when I started out, I had a website on Weebly, mm -hmm. which is just a little do-it-yourself website, and I used a delivery service called eJunkie. Oh, yes. Um, that's how I started out, and then from there I upgraded to WordPress and having, you know, a WooCommerce shop and different subscription and membership programs. Um, 
And so my business was on WordPress until until I closed it yep. a few days ago. <laughs> um, <laughs> now for my current business, I use Kajabi, which I really love. Right. Yeah, fantastic. Isn't it amazing how um, we are blessed to live in this time and age with yeah. the technology that we have that we can, despite the pandemic, you know, mm -hmm. um, continue to live on. Have you found that um, many of those that you work, are working with you um, have struggled to adopt the technology or do they embrace it? Well, with within the massage therapy community, some some people do struggle mm. to embrace that. It's, you know, the type of people that are attracted to massage want to do massages. Yep. They, they don't want to be on a computer working. So, no. um, so there it's about 50-50, but that's something that happened during the pandemic is, you know, I had a mailing list of about 12,000 massage therapists and people started saying, Gail, you know, will you help us learn to do online business? So I actually started a program to help, you know, the, the massage therapists if, that wanted to write books, create online courses, teach continuing education to be able to take part of their business online. So tell us about um, the accolades that you've received for your massage work. I'd love to hear about that. Yeah, so I was very surprised. I started writing for Massage Magazine around 2016. And, you know, I'd be in a few issues a year. And they called me up one day and said, you know, you're making a, a big difference in the massage therapy industry. And we want to put you on the cover of the magazine and have you be our um, all-star for, for April. They do, I think, three or four all-stars per year. So that was a really big honor. And right about the same time, um, Mike Hinkle, who runs the World Massage Festival, contacted me and said kind of the same thing, that you're making a big difference and helping so many therapists with their business and marketing and being successful that, that we want to induct you into the World Massage Hall of Fame. Oh, wow. Very and nice. So it was really fun because, you know, I remember back, and when I was in massage school, looking through the magazines and seeing the names of these teachers and people that I looked up to. And so it, it was really an honor to be kind of in the same category as, as them. No, it's a real credit to you and uh, keep up the great work. Now, I, I'm wondering if we can talk about the marketing component because you, you've talked about email lists, you've talked about uh, being recognized for helping uh, those mm -hmm. in your industry through with marketing. What type of sort of uh, approach do you take to marketing? Well, I think that that there's there's kind of like four pillars. So you want to have your foundation in place mm -hmm. and then focus on the things that you like to do and that you're good at. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, in this day and age, you want to have a, a good website that speaks to your ideal client. Yeah. You probably want to have some social media presence. Um, you definitely want to build your network and, and meet people and um, and get your name out that way. And then from there, you know, there's different directions you can go. If somebody has a local business, I'm still a fan of printed marketing materials. Yep. So, um, and then if you have an online business, it might be something like starting a podcast and then just have, you know, your different areas kind of cover your bases. Mm -hmm. But then like if you're, networking is your favorite you can kind of lean into that and do more of that so there seems um, to be like um different avenues that you can take so you would almost tailor solutions to individual people that you work with yeah so i ran actually a marketing boot camp for for many years and you know i'd have have take everybody through the process of making sure they had their four areas set up and through doing that usually the light bulbs would start going off and yeah. they would kind of figure out which, which area was their favorite. Um, so maybe they're in the chamber of commerce and they get more involved there and realize that's where they want to put their time and effort. Time and effort. Um, so yeah. And, and I really think it's about experimenting, trying different things. Being flexible. You know, this year my, my goal is to do a hundred podcast interviews. Oh, very good. Very good. That's and a nice challenge. Happens. Yes, see what happens. Now, I, I'd like to, if we could, for the sake of context, Gail, um, mm -hmm. share your story because I know that um, 
you had a moment in time where you were burnt out, you were in debt, yeah. you were unwell. You know, how did mm-hmm. you overcome these challenges? Would you mind sharing the, the story? So this was when, um, it was probably 2011, 2012. And, you know, I was a mom of two. I had a three-year-old, a 13-year-old, and a busy massage therapist. It's a very hard job. Mm. It's a very physically demanding job. And I just think that my my immune system had gotten run down over the years. Yeah. Um, so I started getting sick, just kind of recurring stuff. You know, I'd get bronchitis, I'd get walking pneumonia, I'd get strep throat. It was just seemed like it was something all the time. And I was like, something's got to change. I can't keep going at this pace. And that's when I started seeing, I had just really recently gotten on Facebook. I hadn't been on there very long. And I started seeing people selling eBooks, mm-hmm. planners, online classes. And I just thought, you know what? I bet I could do that. I'm going to give that a try. And at that time, I wasn't working for myself. So I also really wanted something that was my own. You know, I'm an entrepreneur at heart and I love to, you know, start businesses. I love learning all the stuff and doing marketing. And so it really lit me up to kind of start my own little side thing. Um, you have a hunger but for my, it. But my, my goal at first was just to be able to cut back my hours a little bit and have a little more time freedom. Um, Absolutely. So... So that's how that's how I started out, and it just I just kept going taking from there, one step and then the next. <laughs> <laughs> left foot, right foot, left foot. Now yep. I, I wonder what was the first um, book that you wrote. I wrote "Massage Enhancements Your Clients Will Love," oh. and it was how to do add-on treatments for your massage so you can make more money per treatment, and. So it was just, it was a simple book to write. I just explained how to do each treatment. And then I got stuck on the photos. I was like, how am I going to do photos for a book? I know nothing (laughs) about this. (laughs) So I had a a free coaching call with somebody from a business group I was in. And she kind of kicked my butt a little bit. And she was like, do it the best you can. And we figured out that I could set it up in my spare room. And I could get my daughter and her friend with an iPhone and just, do the best that I could. And I always thought, well, I can upgrade the pictures later if I want. But they were fine. Yeah, fantastic. And... It's oftentimes <laughs> the case, isn't it? You don't need mm-hmm. to be as perfectionistic. Do you think you have a tendency to be per- a, a bit of a perfectionist? I No. No? Not anymore. Not anymore. <laughs> well, that's a good thing. I think I was just overthinking that. Because mm. um, I really do think done is better than perfect. Oh, that is sage advice right there. Anybody who's <laughs> listening to this call, done is better than perfect. Motion beats standing still. That's for sure and certain. Thank mm-hmm. you for sharing, Gail. Now, I wonder, what is your writing style? How do you go about writing? Is it all in one day or how does it happen for you? Yeah, it's so my writing style is very conversational. And that was a big block I kind of had to get over because I thought, I'm not good at writing. I don't know how to write. And then I was like, I'm just going to write like, I was explaining to somebody or telling somebody something. So I just went with, I started with blogging and that's a very conversational style of writing and kind of started writing more consistently. Um, And I'll, I do a little bit of each. If I'm working on a book or a project, I just, I'm just really consistent and I'll do like 30 minutes a day. Yeah. Do you do do an outline? Do you have an idea for the book before you start writing or do you just take yourself on a journey and see where it ends up? Yes, I usually have an outline and it'll just kind of be bullet points what what I think I want to cover in the book. And then one thing will lead to another once you start writing. Certainly. So so So. I know that you have a number of books. Tell me about your other books, because I know that there'll be people on the call who'd be very interested in getting their hands on them at some stage. Yeah, so um, aside from my books for the massage and spot industry, in 2021, I set a huge goal. I actually um, ran across a lady on, on Amazon Kindle who, who wrote a, how to write 12 books in 12 months. And I was like, well, I like a challenge. So I challenged <laughs> myself to write 12 books in 12 months. And I only made it halfway. I wrote six books in 12 months. Well done. Um, and the first one 
was called the gratitude habit. And it was just something I started thinking about during COVID lockdown is, you know, trying to find things to be grateful for, even though we couldn't do so many of the things that we mm. wanted to do or were used to doing. Yeah. And it kind of took me back to, to a time in my life where another time where things were, were hard. And I really just started to manage anxiety and stress thinking of things I was grateful for. And, and so I wrote this, it's a journal type book where each, yep. each day has a little reflection and then some journaling prompts. So that was my first one. Um, my second one is called the Designing Your Dream Life Workbook, where I kind of take the reader through different aspects of thinking through what it is that you really want in your life and pulling in those qualities, yep. I would say. Mm -hmm. Um, one example I like to give is, you know, a lot of us aspire to maybe have a house at the beach, on the beach, but it seems really out of reach. Um, but then if you, if you think, well, what are the things that I think having that house on the beach will give me? We can probably have those things. Like when I'm at the beach, I hang out with my family a lot and we, you know, walk down the beach and we have you know, fun times cooking together because mm -hmm. you're in vacation mode. Well, you can draw that into your life in your house right now. Um, and you don't need to be at the beach. And you don't need to be at the beach. So no. thinking about like all of these things that we think are out there, what are the qualities of them? And, and how can we just have those in our in our day to day life? Um, it's, it's kind of saying, you know, I want a million dollars. Well, no, you don't. You just want the right. lifestyle that a million dollars can bring you. Yeah. Would you, would you agree with that? Oh, definitely. And you can probably have a lot of those things that you think you need a million dollars for without the million dollars. Absolutely. So what else do we have in your library? Uh, I wrote a book on decluttering your schedule. Mm -hmm. So being a homeschooling mom with two businesses, I really had to manage my time. Yeah. And I started looking at what am I doing? Like from the time I wake up till the time I go to bed, what am I doing? Am I doing things that I don't like doing that I don't need to do? <laughs> and I just, I just looked at so many things um, and realized, you know, there are things I can have outsourced. There are things I don't really have to do anymore. Mm -hmm. And just really getting creative with solutions. Um, I think that's something we tend to do is get a little bit stuck. Like either I have to clean my house or I have to pay somebody to clean my house. Well, there's other options. Don't clean your house. <laughs> yeah, don't leave, leave it messy. Yeah. Lower your standards a little bit. Man, or, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> or one thing we do is like we all pitch in and clean for an hour a week. Yeah, yeah. Share the load. So, yeah, share the load. Like there's all kinds of different options. And so that book's just about, you know, getting you to really look at where your time goes. If you're saying, well, I want to do this or that, and I don't have time, I bet you can find it. Yeah, um, wonderful. So let's see, what was the next one? The next one was about decluttering your beliefs. I was going to ask you about beliefs. This is probably a good one to talk about. Mm -hmm. So, and that's another thing that holds us back so much oh, is yeah. we have these beliefs. We don't often even realize where they came from and they're stopping us from, from progressing. Yeah. I mean, you're a long time dead, aren't you? Why, why hold back? Yeah. You've got one so, chance at this. I often like to say, this is not a stage show. This life is, a, you know, a real event. <laughs> yeah. So do what you can. So I'm wondering, did you go through any of those challenges with your mindset as you were starting out? And how did you break through them? Well, definitely. That's why I'm writing about them now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, and it's fun. It's kind of fun to figure out like where you may have gotten a belief from. Mm -hmm. um, you know, one thing I realized like, with my writing is I, when I was in high school, I asked my teacher, I said, can I just write like I talk? And she was like, no, you can't. Oh, uh, <laughs> and I, but I completely integrated that belief. Like it was, you know, from God above. Yeah. Like it was absolute. <laughs> yeah. It's and in the Bible. <laughs> once I realized, oh my goodness, that woman was probably just having a bad day. And yes. here I let that affect my entire life. <laughs> <laughs> I was, you know, I was able to quickly let that go. And we get things, you know, from our parents and our grandparents mm -hmm. and we get to decide, do I still believe that? 
Yeah, wonderful. I love yeah. it. You know, there's so much great content. The more you talk about it, the more I'm sure people are going to want to read this. And now we talked about audio books before. I'm wondering, you've got ebook format. There's obviously EPUB format and there's audio book. Do you have any plans to expand into those sort of other areas and on other distribution platforms? Yes, audio books are, are on my list to, to try to do this year. So, mm -hmm. Fantastic. Um, and I'm just, you know, there's, you have to learn, I have to learn about it to see what the steps are, decide if I want to read it myself or hire somebody and just, yeah, one, one step at a time. So make that's the, definitely on my list. Make the decision as you go along. Now, I'd love to, if we could shift our focus a little bit to your website, um, Elevate mm -hmm. with Gail. Um, I love the layout. What are you using to, um, you know, present your books? Um, is it like a shopping cart? Is there some sort of system? Oh, no, on? that's my Kajabi. That's my Kajabi site. Oh, that site. is Kajabi. Right. Yeah. That uh -huh. looks so it's all, it's all built in. I can't say enough good things about Kajabi. Well, it's funny, you know, because I thought Kajabi was just its own sort of standalone membership portal. I've learned something today. Uh-huh. There you go. <laughs> yeah, so it's website, mailing list, shop, um, memberships and subscriptions. It's all built in. Um, and what I love about it is... I can do anything I need to myself. I no, do have no coding required. Yeah, I have a VA who does a lot for me, but if she's not available, I love the fact that I can jump in and Give take care go. of what I want to do that day. You know, and that's um, the rewarding part of all of this. It's not only about making that first sale, it's it's the learning, it's who you become in the journey, isn't it? Oh, definitely. Yes. Now, I know that you have some wonderful content on there, but you also have a program called Elevate. I'd love to take a deep dive into that if we could. Yeah, so that's my Elevate Mastermind, and that's actually the one that I started um, when the massage therapists on my list were saying, hey, will you show yes. us how to start an online business? And so it's really um, for people that are just starting out to go from no online business to, hey, I have a business, I have products for sale, I have books for sale. Um, and I, there's probably 30 or 40 courses and trainings in there at this point. Mm -hmm. um, I, I have one called Eight Week Dream Business Startup, and that kind of takes you through building your foundation, like getting your domain name and your website and mm -hmm figuring out what your first product will be and getting started with your marketing. So the there's a lot of parts and pieces, but it's doable. Now, I wonder, Gail, um, you do a lot of um, courses and books and that sort of thing. Do you do any one-on-one -on -one work? Is, is that a service that you offer? I do. Right now, I'm, I'm only taking a few clients at a time, mm -hmm. um, four at a time. So when I have openings for coaching, I definitely... Um, send that out to my email list. And then when my son goes back to school, he's going to high school in the fall, I plan to open up more one-on-one um, -on -one coaching. So in terms of the massage business, um, are you, do you have any restrictions locally at the moment? What's happening there? Are you starting, starting to open the doors again and invite people back? Um, yeah, so I don't currently do massage. Right. But in the industry here, yeah, in our town, you just have to wear a mask and everybody's open for business. Every, everything's all good. Now, talk us through yeah. the rest of your website because I know that there's a lot on mm -hmm. there. Well, I have quite a few blog posts, so that's a, a great place to start kind of seeing what what I'm all about and, and what I like to write about and talk about and share. Um, and then I just started a new program called the Monthly Challenge Club, and it is all about developing your success habits and the habits that will create the life that you want to have so excellent um so each month i i do a new monthly challenge and um there's a lot of resources habit trackers and fun things like that in there because i love all that stuff and i'm like if i love it probably other people, <laughs> other other will people like it too. as well i know that the secret source to um you know online businesses is email marketing to some de to some degree at least do yeah. you talk to your email list a lot in do you yes. like when something new comes out for you do you share it oh yeah i share really a lot <laughs> <laughs> They hear from me almost daily. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> so, and it'll be, you know, just I do what I call my daily blog. So it's kind of 
after I do my morning routine, I just kind of write up a few paragraphs of whatever I'm inspired to talk about and I'll email that out mm -hmm. or I might do a live stream or something. So how do you um, find those, the live streams? Is that a challenge for you? Do you find it natural to get in front of the camera like that? You know, again, it was one of those things where I started out just so nervous and so clunky. <laughs> My first video ever is on YouTube and it is <laughs> so embarrassing. <laughs> I'm sure it's not so bad. <laughs> but, you know, just over time, I got more and more comfortable and now I, I really like it. Yeah, so, fantastic. You know, I've yeah. really loved this call, Gail. I'm pretty sure that uh, those who are on the call with us have enjoyed it too. Now, given that we're at the pointy end of the call, I'm wondering, um, most importantly, where will people be able to contact you, find your books, find all of your works, join the Elevate uh, your Elevate program, and so on and so forth? Yeah, so my website is elevatewithgail.com, and Gail is spelled G-A-E-L. G-A-E-L. So head over to my website. Um, the first step might be to get my free ebook, which is the one about decluttering your schedule. Jump on my email list. You can check out all my programs and, and everything right there. Go from there. Now, if uh, you're on the call today, make sure you visit Elevate with Gail. That's G A E L, and uh, download her ebooks and other books. There's so much great content on there. And from what you've learned today on today's call, I'm sure you're pretty excited. I know I'm excited because there's lots of real life. Uh, applicable practical um, things to learn there that's for sure and with all that being said Gail thank you so very much for joining me on the show today yeah, thanks so much for having me thanks for joining us today if you enjoyed the call then make sure to subscribe leave a comment share us with your friends and book your spot on the show at myfuturebusiness.com forward slash interviews and if you're looking for solutions that will help grow your business, then visit myfuturebusiness.com forward slash shop.